Okay, this is going to be the instructions for the Celsius and Fahrenheit graphing homework. This homework is going to be collected for a grade, and I'm just going to review what is responsible and what the purpose is. First of all, the purpose is I'm trying for you to use linear algebra, okay, this formula you've seen in math, and I want to connect it to some real-life problem. I want us to use this linear equation to connect the equivalent temperatures in Celsius with Fahrenheit using linear algebra so that we can derive a formula that connects or converts a Celsius or a Fahrenheit temperature into a Celsius temperature. So we're building the formula that you may already know that if I have a Fahrenheit temperature I can convert it to Celsius by these equivalents and through this equation. So in any case this is the equation for a straight line, as you've seen before, and this is a linear, okay, type of variable or problem. So we can use this. So this is how we, if you, you can use linear algebra to derive equations, okay, in this case. So let's do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a plot. Now, since I want to derive a formula that goes Celsius is equal to Fahrenheit, you can see that my y-axis is going to be Celsius and my x-axis is my Fahrenheit. So let's uh, create a graph here that would do so. Alright, so I'm going to graph this. Alright, and I'm just going to scroll down. And you should use most of the paper when you make a graph. Okay, and you should be using a straight line or a straight edge to make these lines. These are, my, these are just going to be estimates. But a graph should have a title. You should label your axes. We should know that this is going to be the Celsius. This is Fahrenheit. Okay. Which you should all know is, truthfully, this is your y-axis. This is your x-axis. I know in math you just make them y and x a lot of times. But in truth, in real life, they actually have variables. Okay. Now we're going to plot these two points. Now the two points I had above were... Uh, I know that 100 degrees Celsius equals 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That's one point. Okay, it's, so let's go find that. So at 100 degrees Celsius, let's make this 100, make this 50 right here. This is 0, and this is 100 degrees Celsius. So at 100 degrees Celsius, my data point is on here, on this line somewhere, on this Y. Now my X is my Fahrenheit, and that's 212. Let's just make this 100. This is 200, and I'm guessing, so 212 is somewhere, I'd say, right here. So my data point, and I'm just going to get rid of this equivalent here to clean it up, is going to be equal to, all right, my, uh, 212, and then my y is 100. And that's how you should write that. That's your data point, and it's right there. Next data point, or next equivalent that we have, is that at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, there's 0 degrees Celsius. So 32 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, it's 50, so 32 would be somewhere here. At 32 degrees Fahrenheit, there's 0 degrees Celsius. So this would be 32, 0. All right, x and y. And that's my other data point. And then what I would do is I would draw a straight line. Okay, and doing the best that I can. Okay, so I know I missed, but you'll be using a straight line or a straight edge to make sure you get a straight line there to get the prop proper slope. Since we're trying to build a linear equation, okay, we should show that equation on this line. So very simply, we know that y equals mx plus b. So y, of course, we're going to use is f. So, Fahrenheit is equal to, well now, what is this M? M is slope. Now, some people use rise over run. Uh, I'm big on the change of Y over the change of X. So, the change of Y over the change of X means you're going to subtract the difference of your Y values. Okay? And so, you see... Um, your y values, of course, are your c's. 
So change of y over change of x. Now, of course, I made a mistake here. I just can't seem to do this without making mistakes. My y is not my f, my x. I'm sorry, some of you guys are like screaming at me. Okay, so let's change this. This is supposed to be a straight line, so let me try to draw that better. Ah, okay, and then, of course, what I'm trying to do here is that uh, my y equals mx plus p. My y is my c. So Celsius is equal to what? Well, my slope, as I said, is change of y over change of x. So you're going to basically subtract y and x and come up with a value. Okay, and that's how you're going to get your, uh, your slope. So if you know this is your x, these are your y values, okay, you can clearly find the difference of those to come up with your slope. Okay, so once you get your slope by subtracting these values, okay, from high to low to make sure they're positive, because you're going to get, you notice this is a positive slope, okay, that slope is equal to m. And that's going to go in your equation here, so whatever you solve for. So c is equal to whatever you solve for for m times x. Now we know x is going to be our um, Fahrenheit plus something called the y-intercept, right? This value here, okay, is called the y-intercept. Okay, now the y-intercept, of course, is where the linear line crosses the y-value. Okay, in this case, it crosses down here. And you probably guess it's going to be cross on a negative 32. So the y-intercept, okay, now it should be whatever you read, okay, but it should be around, well, you'll find out. And, of course, it'll be a negative value, and that will go there. So once you have this value and this value, you have the equation of converting a Fahrenheit into Celsius, okay? And, of course, um, that is what question one is about, okay? So... If Oops. So question. So question one, as I just erased that, is about finding out these formulas that way. So using your y equals mx plus b, you can solve for that equation. Now number two, find the temperature which Fahrenheit equals Celsius. You can do this a couple of different ways, okay? You can use it graphically, well, or algebraically. Now, graphically speaking, as I just erased my graph, okay, we had a graph that looks something like this, where I had um, my line looked like something like that, and this was my um, C equals the slope times the F minus whatever my y-intercept was, whatever that formula was, okay? That's not really that secret anymore. But um, you have this line, and you want to find where, uh, well, you want to use this graphically, maybe to see what temperature Fahrenheit equals Celsius. And if Fahrenheit equals Celsius, that means y equals x. Maybe you can determine something about y, equal x, y equals x compared to this line. So what's a y equals x line? And what does this line look compared to each other? Okay, so if you were to draw a y equals x line, okay, whatever that looks like, and you were to compare it and put that over this line that we drew in the first part, then you would probably see where they have the same temperature. Another way that I would think is take your equation you just built, okay, um, Celsius equals slope, okay, times your Fahrenheit minus your y-intercept, Okay, obviously these are numbers, okay? Well, you know that these values will be the what? Well, I'm saying them when they equal each other. So these values would be the same, and you can algebraically solve for them. So C and become the same unknown variable, and you can solve for them algebraically. And that's how you can go about doing that. Okay, so I don't care if you do it graphically, but I want to see where in the graph, or you do it algebraically. Now, if you look up, because this is a very common thing to look up, and you give me the answer without any work, it's going to be wrong. So I want to see your, your work here. I want this number one is really not much work. It's on the graph, but I want you to lay it out. 
based on your numbers. Don't make up numbers because you know the answer. Use your numbers from your graph. Make a nice graph. Make sure you plot the points. And that's basic uh, instructions of how to use linear algebra to build a chemical equation between two points that are related linearly. Okay? Hope that helped.